Let's take a look at oil TFs, ETFs, shall we? As oil producers look to the G20 talks for clarity on global tensions, of course, that really focused on trade. President Trump, President Xi of China meet Saturday. Meanwhile, OPEC leaders meet next week to discuss an extension of potential supply cuts. With us now, Halima Croft, RBC's head of global commodity research from Vienna, where that OPEC meeting will be held. And John Kilduff, again, Capital Founding Partners here with us at the NYC. Halima, let me start with you. Any expectations in terms of what will happen in Vienna next week? Yeah, I mean, my expectation is they're going to roll over that production cut they did in December, a 1.2 million barrel a day cut. I mean, the one thing that binds all these OPEC members together is a need for higher revenue. So I expect them to roll it over. I expect the Saudis, though, to come out and essentially say they'll be nimble. They'll swing both ways on production. They'll basically meet a supply shortfall because of geopolitics and they'll respond to a Dutra and demand situation. So I expect it to be rolled over. But again, I think everybody wants higher prices. And so I could see the Saudis potentially taking more barrels off the market over the summer if needed. Um, are you surprised at the recent move up, or is it sort of what you might expect, given particularly, of course, this week at least started, we haven't talked about it in a couple of days, but with these significant tensions between the U.S. and Iran? I mean, these are very serious tensions between the U.S. and Iran. I mean, we've had six tankers hit in the past month. We've had major infrastructure targeted, like the East-West Pipeline in Saudi Arabia, Iraqi energy infrastructure. I mean, I'm not surprised by the move up. It would be higher if we didn't have trade war fears, if we didn't have the U.S. supply story. But if we get an off-ramp or an appearance of an off-ramp on the trade war at the G20, I expect these geopolitical issues to push prices higher. John, do you agree with that? Yeah, I think that's uh, absolutely correct. Um, although now, with President Trump seeming to threaten Vietnam with potentially some sanctions, uh, there's there once again is another key Asian economy, key to the energy demand calculation that could get hurt or harmed, and it could have fall out across the region again. We already it had... might be a little while. I mean, that was just a quick comment from him. You never know. But, but well, so do, do do industry who are starting to relocate to Vietnam think twice about that? Uh, again, we already had Japan, South Korea, China, all hurt by these by the fallout from the U.S.-China trade war. Vietnam, arguably the only beneficiary, because companies seem to be flocking there for now. Right. So that's that's that would be one bright spot for energy demand heads a bit south. And I think Kaleem is right too about them rolling over the uh, the production cuts. Although you, you'll see them work the rope line, the press rope line, in the run up to the meeting and at yeah. the meeting. Particularly today was interesting with Iraq calling for maybe deeper cuts, even though Iraq only complies with about 40 percent of their production cut quota. Uh, Halima, real quickly to you, Strait of Hormuz, should we be protecting shipments through there, even though now we're almost energy independent and don't care as much about it as the president said? I mean, it's our fifth fleet that is there to keep those sea lanes open. I mean, we can ask for other countries to financially contribute, but if we want to ensure the free flow of, you know, oil through these critical choke points, we're going to have to do it. And we're not insulated from the price effects of problems in the Middle East. So, unfortunately, it's going to be the U.S. that has to do it. John, what about the inventory data yesterday? Big drawdown, worse than expected, caused a big spike up in oil. What's the what's the supply picture in the U.S. looking like between inventories and production? It looks like we've moved into a serious mode of uh, crude oil inventory declines. We had a significant decrease last week as well. Uh, after weeks and months uh, of significant stockpile builds, refiners have picked up uh, at their activity. The demand for crude oil has risen. Imports uh, plummeted and exports at a new record. And you're going to see more of that. So the uh, crude oil picture in the U.S. could uh, start to be, be a little challenged here as we get deeper into the uh, peak summer driving season. Last week, two weeks ago, we saw record gasoline demand. So there's sort of a witch's brew right now of supportive factors for the oil complex when you look at these demand figures and all the other troubles. You that guys are, are both there. very bullish, and yet yeah. WTI hasn't broken 60. Correct. And, you know, we're waiting. We're, this is when you get in, Sarah, potentially. Uh, although you are also closely watching any any reverberations in terms of back and forth between Iran and the U.S. No, no question about that. I mean, you that, 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 indicated that, earlier this yes, week how important that's, that is. That's the game breaker. Uh, something goes down serious there, uh, you're looking at uh, 80 to to $100 a barrel.